If it promises to help you organize your life to be more productive, then I've bought it. Today I'm going to review Grace Beverly's The Productivity Method as someone who is a self-identified, unorganized overachiever. If you're here because you want some anti-influencer gossip or because you really, really love Grace and you just want to hear about how great she is, then that's not what I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you an honest, unbiased review about this notebook and whether or not I think it was worth it as somebody who previously worked in academia, as somebody who helped a lot of graduates and young people with their career, and as somebody who is now in a career trying to be more organized. I'll tell you what I thought about this book and then you can make your own decisions. So when I bought the notebook, it was 26 pounds plus three pounds for shipping, bringing it to a total of 29 pound 20 for a notebook. A notebook. Yes, I was influenced to buy this, I guess. Uh, not necessarily as a follower of Grace because I'm not on Instagram, but on YouTube, she made the video promoting this book right when I was switching jobs. And I was starting to feel overwhelmed by my lack of organization and productivity. So I bought this notebook in the hopes that it would solve all of my problems and help me become a millionaire like Grace. I guess. So yeah, I guess I was influenced by this. Yeah. But I don't hate the notebook. So as a slight preamble, yes, I used to do bikini competitions and I was like in the influencer world, I guess. And that's when I first followed Grace. So I do have kind of the classic Grace Fit UK barbell pad and her ankle straps and I have two Tala shirts. So I'm not a super fan. I do like some of her stuff, but I don't buy it because she sells it. Just take this review for what it is. And that's me, an or unorganized person, desperately trying to be more organized. <laughs> desperately trying to be more organized. I'll start simple and just talk a little bit about like the aesthetics. So I bought the Midnight Blue Oil book. So you can see it's a really lovely deep blue. It's very simple. It does say the productivity method on it. And then it says the productivity method on the side. And it says by Grace Beverly here, I guess it's like an aesthetic choice not to use capital letters on anything. I will say like the front cover bit, the productivity method is slightly crooked. I've only noticed that like right now, so like who cares? It does feel like good quality. So the front cover is definitely very hard, very durable, I would say. It could survive like bouncing around in a backpack, which is really important. I probably have a few other notebooks here that just tends to get a bit tatty. You know, it doesn't quite hold up. Relatively heavy, but again, you could throw it in your backpack. I put it in my bag and I have no problem. Other thing that I do like about this notebook is that I could pull it out at a coffee shop or in the office and not feel embarrassed about it. I know that sounds really vain, but I have another one that I think I actually threw out. And it said on the front cover, like, you are your own super goddess or something like that. I always felt a bit silly when I took it out in the office. So I quite like that this is very, just kind of classy and simple and aesthetic. Paper quality is really good, really, really good paper quality. I would say definitely better than some of my other ones. I have the Freedom Mastery Journal here and I have the Clever Fox Weekly Planner. And I would say that this paper quality is nicer than those in terms of how it feels and how it writes. So the typeface and the kind of font choices and the like internal designs not for me. I mean, I don't know what these triangles and like abstract things are. To me, this is just a little bit saved by the bell. I'm saved by the bell. And it's a bit young, which makes sense because Grace is younger than me and I'm assuming her target audience is also younger than me. When I first bought this notebook, my instinct was that I really didn't like it. And that's because it does your goals for the month. So you have 12 months, presumably. And then it goes into the week and then the rest of the notebook is all days and it just didn't instinctively work for me because I like to have my month planned and then I would have kind of four weeks and each week would have seven days because I do tend to use my notebooks every single day. But I recognize that the reason they probably didn't do that was because if you did it that way and you had like a week followed by seven days and then let's say you missed a day, you'd then have to either skip a page and have a wasted page or use that page but then not be on the right week. So I do get it and it is why I assume they have two ribbons so that you can put one on the week that you're on and then one on the specific day that you're on. I get it, especially if you don't work a nine to five or you know if you don't work weekends, why would you have seven days when you could have five? 
So I assume that's just kind of a, a choice that they've made. It doesn't super work for me, but I understand it. I personally like to be able to visualize my to-do list based on here's what I'm doing this week and then what I have to do every day. So I just found it was a lot of faffing about to go week to week and I kind of just stopped using it. So I've had this book for nearly a year and I've used it like maybe five pages of it. One of the things that I do like about it is that it has projects, tasks, quick ticks, three non-negotiable things I'll get done today. So I think it's a good mental exercise if you're not very good at writing to-do lists and you don't really know how to organize your brain that well, I guess. I think it's helpful. The schedule's there. I would never use that schedule because I have that on my computer, both my work computer and my personal computer. And then I also have stuff on my phone. I think it is helpful for things that you maybe are forgetting about. Like sometimes I forget if I have a dentist appointment and stuff like that, but otherwise I would not see myself using the schedule. And even the quick ticks, the tasks and the projects, I found myself coming up with like fake quick ticks so that I could fill the book a little bit. Again, that's just a personal thing. Maybe you're not like that, but I think psychologically we are kind of formed to want to be able to tick that box. So we just are like, I was writing things in there that weren't real almost. And instead what I do is I typically will just take a regular notebook, like just a regular notebook and write a to-do list. And then the next day I take a look at my previous day's to-do list and anything I didn't get done, I just transfer over. So it's kind of like an ongoing to-do list almost. And I find that's really helpful because I can kind of see the days that I finish something and I don't need that projects, big ticks, easy tasks things because I just instinctively know that based on like knowing my own work, I guess. I am running out of my regular just line notebook. So I think I will go back to the productivity method. I don't think it was a waste. I think I will use it again, but I haven't really been using it since I got it. Making this video kind of made me realize that I should go back to the productivity method, maybe for my kind of 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. and my 5 p.m. to 10 p.m calendar. I don't have a hard time being productive at work. It's more my personal goals that I'm not very good at. So things like dedicating time to reading, dedicating time to the gym, dedicating time to my YouTube channel, and of course, starting my own business and all this other stuff that I'm trying to achieve. And I think that's where the productivity method book might be really useful because I can just write down the stuff going on for my personal life and separate it from my work goals which I know is really difficult because I'm sure a lot of people can't do that if they're ne not necessarily super productive at work, but I guess it kind of depends on what you're using it for and what you're looking for. Do I think it was overpriced? I think 29 pounds is a lot of money for a notebook, but it's not that overpriced in terms of some of the other ones that I bought. The Clever Fox Weekly Planner, and it has, you know, kind of similar things, you know, habits, skills. There's quite a lot in here. I used it for a bit. I didn't use it a lot. It has things like, you know, notes, your personal to-do list, this week's wins. It also came with like stickers as they all seem to, like I don't know who is using stickers, but it came with those. <laughs> and I think this was around about the 30 pound mark. So it is what books are going for. I also have Freedom Mastery, which is like, you know, an absolutely massive book, quite a lot in there about goal setting. It was all just a bit much for me, you know, like it's just, this just isn't, isn't for me. I think this was also about maybe 40 pounds. It might've been a bit more, I'll double check. I also have other productivity and planning books. Like I've got the 100 day financial goal journal, build a plan for your financial future. I'm using that right now and I'll definitely review it once I'm done, kind of based on my experience, if it helped me save money. I am struggling with it because I don't really know what my financial goals are. So I'm just trying to think through what that means and whether this book is helpful. To finish, do I regret buying it? No, I think it's a fine notebook. I think I'll probably end up using it. I think it looks nice. I think it feels sturdy. I think it's good quality. I have a lot of respect for Grace and for female content creators, but I think one of the things that Grace has done really well is kind of rebrand herself when she realized she didn't want to just post booty pics all the time and she didn't want to just be kind of a fitness influencer. She made herself a bit more well-rounded. And I think that's really opened the space for young women to talk about owning businesses and being entrepreneurs. Of course, she was not the first and she's not the only one. There's a lot of female-led businesses, but she was a pretty big name in the fitness world and she could have very easily just continued to make money, you know, well into her 30s as a woman that posted booty pics, but she decided that wasn't right for her. And I'm not judging anybody that posts booty pics or bikini pics, do whatever you want with your body and your own social media. I just think when Grace decided that's what she didn't want, you know, she made that shift and she did a really good job at it and she's kind of changed that narrative a little bit for young women especially, so I don't mind buying her products. I bought a Vino in the early 2000s because Jennifer Anderson was shilling it. And there's no way that she was actually using that product. So I don't know, I've been influenced for a long time. Anyway, will I use it? Yes. Did it make me a millionaire and sort out my crumpled paper brain? No.
but that was a long shot. If you wanna buy one of these planners, I think it's on a pre-order system for them when I looked online and they have a few other colors. If you just want a well-made notebook designed for Gen Z, go for it. But if you're feeling a bit low and maybe you're thinking like this will change my life, I would say go to WH Smith or Chapters or Indigo or wherever you get your notebooks. You know, if you have an independent stationery store near you, I would go there and buy a pretty notebook that you can use to write notes in. You don't need to spend lots of money to be more productive and manage your time better. Don't buy this if you think that it's gonna change your life or if financially it's not the right choice for you. There are way cheaper notebooks that you can buy and that you can use. Lots that you can even get for free if you go to conferences and stuff. You really do not have to spend a lot of money. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that like button so that I know there are other people out there who get influenced to buy things that they think will improve their entire lives and make them millionaires. Thanks, see you later.